Hello and welcome, this is Dennis Whiskers from Whiskers Educational Materials, that's VEMonline.net. In this video we will discuss typical thoracic vertebrae. Vertebral column usually consists of 33 vertebrae. 7 cervical, 12 thoracic, 5 lumbar, 5 fused sacral, and usually four coccygeal vertebrae that also frequently are fused. So that cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, and coccygeal. There are four physiological curves on the vertebral column. Cervical lordosis, thoracic kyphosis, lumbar lordosis, and sacral kyphosis. We need all of them, but excessive curve in any of these regions is not desirable. Excessive C-spine lordosis will usually lead to neck pain, uh, shoulder pain, numbness tingling down the arms and the fingers. Excessive T-spine kyphosis will decrease rotational range of motion of the uh, thoracic cage. And excessive L-spine lordosis will usually lead to lower back pain. And usually we don't really talk about sacral spine kyphosis, but just know that it's there. So we have four physiological curves. There are 12 thoracic vertebrae in total and they are intermediate in size between cervical and lumbar vertebrae. Going from top to bottom, vertebrae will increase in size. So the largest of thoracic vertebrae is T12. T12 is highlighted. Let's take a closer look. Thoracic vertebrae are distinguished from others by the presence of articulating facets on the sides of the bodies where articulation with the heads of the ribs will occur and as well facets on transverse processes where articulation with the turbicle of the rib will occur. Now not all of the 12 thoracic vertebrae share exactly the same features hence the name typical vertebrae and atypical vertebrae. This is a picture of a typical thoracic vertebrae straight from Gray's Anatomy's book which was published in 1858. Henry Gray is definitely considered as pioneer of the modern anatomy. His textbook still to this day is a universal landmark in medicine. So these are the images from Gray's Anatomy. You can google that and here you can see Henry Gray himself. All Gray's Anatomy images can be used by teachers all over the world. There is no copyright on it. It is a free to use resource. You can find every single one of them on my colleague's Nikita Vizhnyak's homepage. That's uh, Pro Health Systems. Uh, that's what we're looking at here. Make sure you check it out. Uh, you'll find a lot of very useful stuff here. Here we are looking at typical thoracic vertebrae. Most vertebrae in thoracic region are considered typical with exceptions of T1 and T9 to T12. Now right in between T2 to T8 are considered as typical vertebrae. Now why is that? We will discuss that in another video. Now typical vertebrae, that's T2 to T8, all share the same following features. All typical thoracic vertebrae have medium-sized heart-shaped vertebral bodies, medium-sized vertebral canal, transverse process with coastal facets, and long spinous process angulating downwards. Let's go back three-dimensional. So here we can see vertebral column with lumbar spine missing, right side's ribs showing and left side's ribs missing. So once again T2 through T8 are typical thoracic vertebrae. Let's take a closer look at T5 for example. Let's zoom in. So once again, why do we have to distinguish between typical and atypical thoracic vertebrae? Well, typical thoracic vertebrae will all share the same features. Let's remove the ribs. Body. Inferior coastal facet. Superior coastal facet. Inferior articular process, superior articular facet. Now here we can see that superior articular surface is facing backwards, so it is facing posteriorly, 
and inferior articular surfaces facing anteriorly. So what does that mean? So first of all, on every typical thoracic vertebrae there's going to be two superior articular surfaces and two inferior articular surfaces and that's basically how the T-spine is, is being held together. So let's add T4 and T6 and here we can see how T-spine vertebrae articulate with each other superiorly and inferiorly. So and once again the same is going to happen on the left side as well. We are looking at the right side of the vertebral column here. And then we have spinous process that is pointing downwards. And we have transverse process with the coastal facet on one side and transverse process with the coastal facet on the other side. So these are the joint surfaces for the rib. A very typical T-spine vertebrae will have three joint surfaces for the rib on the right side and three joint surfaces for the rib on the left side. Superiorly, we have two joint surfaces that will articulate with the uh, corresponding rib above and inferiorly will have articulation with the rib that's below. So here we can see how all this is put together. Let's write that out a little bit. Here we can see that ribs are basically put right between two vertebrae. Now this is T5, that's T4, and that's T6. This is fifth rib, that's sixth rib. Now fifth rib articulates with superior facet of T5, facet on transverse process of T5, and inferior facet of T4. To sum this up, these are basically the key features of typical thoracic vertebrae. So we have this articulation of the rib that's wedged between two thoracic vertebrae. We have articulation with the uh, vertebrae that's below, that's the corresponding vertebrae. Same name, T5, fifth rib. We have articulation with the vertebrae that's above, and we have the articulation with the uh, corresponding vertebrae transverse process. Here the rib is removed, but we can see that T4 is going to articulate with fourth rib with the uh, superior articular facet and the facet that's found on the uh, transverse process. To finish this up, we have a few more common features of the typical thoracic vertebrae. We have lamina groove, so obviously we'll have a lamina groove on both sides of vertebral column left and right. Then we have pedicle. Again, we will have two of those. And we'll have vertebral canal. That's where the uh, spinal cord runs through. So there you have it. Typical thoracic vertebrae. Don't forget to check out Pro Health Systems homepage. You'll find a lot of useful stuff there. That's it for this time. Thank you for watching this. If you found this useful, please subscribe, share, like, and be liked in return. Thank you all and see you soon. Thanks.